Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us today. My name is Shauna Sadler. I'm the Engagement Manager of the Americas and Caribbean with ORCID. And joining me today is my colleague, Brian Minahan, who is the Engagement Lead for Oceania and Hong Kong with ORCID. So for the agenda today, first, I'm gonna talk about ORCID and give a high level overview of ORCID and the new member portal that we're building. Uh, then Brian will speak specifically to the member portal and demonstrate the new affiliation manager tool. Uh, we're happy to receive your questions. Please feel free to email us. Next question. Next slide, please. ORCID's vision is a world where all who participate in research, scholarship, and innovation are uniquely identified and connected to their contributions and affiliations across time, disciplines, and borders. So in short, ORCID is part of an infrastructure to organize scholarly activities. We provide a unique ID number to people. This ID then connects to the researchers' scholarly activities to their ORCID record. The person can be anywhere in the world and working in any discipline. Next slide, please. ORCID provides three services. First, we issue the unique ID number to people, usually researchers. Second, we provide a record so people can document their research activities. And third, ORCID provides a technical infrastructure to share this data with other systems in the scholarly communication ecosystem. While ORCID is free for individuals to use, uh, as a global nonprofit organization, ORCID is sustained by a membership structure for organizations interested in using the ORCID registry. Next slide, please. So here's an overview of ORCID and our metrics as of March 2021. Uh, we have issued just under 11 million ORCID IDs and, almost, and we have almost 1,200 members and 23 consortia around the world. Next slide, please. So although we make ORCID easy and free for researchers, uh, ORCID can be a challenge for organizations, for member organizations, connecting their local systems to ORCID's member API. Next slide, please. ORCID has 23 consortia, and we encourage new members to join consortia because we've found members have an enhanced ORCID experience being part of a community of practice. We've created a new portal for consortia members. This portal will have two new tools which will help bring added value to consortial membership. The tools are Affiliation Manager, and this is what Brian's going to demonstrate today. So the Affiliation Manager is a tool that will enable administrative staff to add and update employment and education affiliation data on researchers' ORCID records. The second tool in the new portal is a data dashboard. And this data dashboard will provide the metrics on the performance of your ORCID integration of your organization. Next slide, please. So today we're gonna to focus on Affiliation Manager. So here's an example from Brian's ORCID record where ORCID used the Affiliation Manager tool to write to the employment section of Brian's record. So some of the key features here. ORCID decided on the terminology to be used in this record to enable consistency across the records of all of our staff. So at universities, some of your staff may choose different naming conventions and various levels of the institution for their ORCID record. Some may choose to affiliate themselves to the faculty or departmental level or even their lab. When your researchers apply for grants or submit manuscripts, if they log in with their ORCID ID, this employment affiliation will be submitted with their information. Your organization may want to pre-populate the employment field with your preferred naming convention. Your researchers will appreciate your help reducing their administrative burden. I'm going to pass it over to Brian now. Thanks, Shauna. Hello, everyone. Uh, very happy to show off the ORCID member portal and specifically the affiliation manager. Uh, this is what the interface looks like. Uh, it's meant to enable uh, institutions to uh, add employment and education easily uh, to their community's ORCID records. Uh, as you can see here, this is quite a bit different from the familiar ORCID uh, view. Uh, when you log in, this is what you see. Uh, it's got some explanation and some, um, uh, some documentation on this uh, homepage. So let's have a look at how it works. For now, uh, we're just adding affiliations using this tool. Uh, we provide an easy uh, CSV file, which you can populate with your local research community's information. And you can merely upload that to the member portal. You don't need to know API calls. You don't have to have XML templates or anything like that. 
So the workflow is more or less like an API uh, interaction, but uh, the member portal simplifies it uh, through its inter uh, user interface. So again, you have this uh, CSV file, which you populate with your local research information. You can upload that to the member portal. Once you do that, uh, very importantly, you can download another CSV file with the emails and authorization links that you can then send out to your community. Your community can, your community can then uh, authenticate to ORCID. Uh, ORCID will collect those permissions and then send them back to the member portal so that you have a nice administrative interface of what your research community is doing and how they've um, interacted with ORCID. Uh, before we start, uh, through trial and error, we found that it's very important to talk about uh, organization identifiers. Uh, you may hear in the, when ORCID is mentioned, uh, that it's a persistent identifier. Uh, that's true, uh, but it's a persistent identifier for individuals. But how persistent identifiers interact and how they're useful uh, is uh, part of the way ORCID is successful. So here is a persistent identifier for organizations. You can see this uh, grid ID, and this is absolutely necessary uh, for you to use the member portal um, through, through this interface. So here's a look at the CSV template that you'd use using the member portal. There are a few required fields. Uh, notice that this organization identifier is one of those. Uh, that's, if you look at column K, that is the Ringgold ID that this institution is using. And uh, you can use either a grid, a Ringgold, or uh, ROR ID that, from the previous slide. Uh, the optional fields um, allow you to edit your affiliations at a later date. So back to the portal. We've got our CSV populated, and you can see that you have a familiar upload from a local file uh, pop-up. And then if we click import affiliations from CSV, uh, this is how you uh, upload them into the member portal. Uh, let's say you only have uh, one person that you want to uh, add an affiliation to. There's also that add affiliation uh, button to do uh, one individual affiliation at a time. So now we've uploaded our uh, affiliation CSV. We then go over to the right and click download permission links. And you can see this is what that would look like. Uh, a CSV with a column of emails, of individual emails and individual links for each and every email. What you would then do is uh, curate this to mail out to your community. And here's an example of what a email from the member portal might look like. Uh, we offer a email template, which is also customizable, but most importantly, as you can see, it has that individual link within the email. The researcher then clicks on the authorization link and the familiar ORCID pop-up uh, appears, uh, either if they have an existing ORCID ID or need to register for a new one. When the researcher clicks authorize, uh, this is what you see at the top in the member portal. Uh, so you have a, a, a success message uh, in the member portal, um, or I'm sorry, the, the, the researcher actually sees this uh, once they authenticate. Uh, and then let's say if they do deny authentication, uh, this is, the um, denial message at the bottom. Okay. So uh, as we can see, this is the familiar um, ORCID adding my employment to my uh, ORCID record via the um, member portal. Um, down below, you can see what that looks like in the, um, pardon me. Down below, you can see what that looks like in the member portal. So you have the emails, uh, you have the ORCID ID, all of the employment details. And if you look at the right, it's very important that you, can, you are able to edit or delete those affiliations. So let's say 
your researcher uh, leaves your organization, you can click on edit and then say put an end date uh, or uh, edit that affiliation how you see fit. And again, you can see this is my ORCID record. Uh, so my two roles at ORCID have been asserted via the ORCID member portal uh, as compared to a previous uh, employment that I added um, by myself. And that um, affiliation takes about five minutes to communicate with the ORCID registry. Uh, as Shauna said, I just want to reiterate that when your researchers uh, apply for funding or submit manuscripts uh, via their ORCID ID, uh, their employment is uh, captured in those authentications. So this is uh, part of the benefit of having your researchers have their affiliations uh, current and updated. I'd just like to uh, thank all of my colleagues at ORCID that uh, made this happen. It's been a fun project, but it's been a lot of work. And I also want to acknowledge our um, kind uh, pilot and beta test uh, institutions who provided invaluable feedback uh, to us so that we could make this uh, exciting tool come about. And again, thank you very much. Uh, this is Shauna and I's contact. Uh, we'd love to hear from you if you have any questions about that. And thank you very much. Thanks, everybody. Thanks.